Hello again. You may remember this test setup from a previous video where I was evaluating a bunch of shunts out of various meters that I had damaged. And the way I was doing that, I've got a power supply that's programmable and I can use this as a constant current source. You may notice that I've changed this slightly. There used to be a high power shunt that was located right here. And I've now replaced that with a LEM current sensor. This is a model HASS200-S. The reason I changed this out is the shunt that I had in here was only rated for about 100 amps. And I've also added a second power supply. So these two are running together in parallel. So using this test setup, we should be able to double the amount of current that we get out of this power supply. So in order to test this thing out, I have a small piece of nichrome wire sitting in here. You can see it's actually made up of four different pieces. They're all in parallel. So the nichrome bar stock that we're going to be testing with is made of a nichrome 80. It's 0.1 inches wide by 0.018 inches thick. The total length is 1.35 inches. So ignore the measured resistance. I have not measured it yet, but the length is 34.29 millimeters. And the cross-sectional area is 1.16 millimeters squared. This gives us a calculated resistance of 8.28 milliohms. So with 10 amps supplied, this should drop roughly 82 millivolts or dissipate about 828 milliwatts. So this is quite a large shunt. This is an antique that a friend of mine gave me. You can see it's mounted on this nice wooden block. This is rated for 500 amps at 50 millivolts. So I have this Bryman BM869S. This is the one that I've done all the testing with. So this is attached to the shunt. You can see it's just going to be reading the voltage across it. And you can see right now it's basically reading nothing. We can go ahead and connect this up. So I've got our little UT210. This one has never been modified. And we'll just switch this to DC and zero it out. I really don't have a good spot here to put this thing, but let's just see. So hopefully this will show up okay. Looks like it's reading roughly 5.7 to 5.9 amps. And you can see on our Bryman BM869S, again at 50 millivolts is 500 amps, so this would be 5.9 to 5.8 amps. So these two meters match. So let's go ahead and we'll increase the current to 10 amps. You can see we're now putting out roughly 10.22 amps. And we'll use our fluke over here to look at the voltage drop. So this is reading roughly 99.7 millivolts. 99.7 millivolts divided by 10 amps gives us 9.77 milliohms. That's fairly close to what we had calculated, 8.28 milliohms. Alright, so I think we're all set to go. You can see we're outputting roughly 10 amps right now. What I'm going to do is slowly increase the current and we'll see how long it takes before this shunt fails. So we're all putting roughly 50 amps right now.
pretty good about 140 amps so this is my unity ut61e I've modified this meter quite a bit one of the things I did with this is I changed it so it could read higher currents so if we look I believe that this is probably the original shunt out of one of the UT61E's and this is looking at the data that I collected for the shunt before I ran it this is actually the shunt that comes from this particular meter so I had made a couple of prototypes this is one of them this was the second to the last one that I made for it this one worked pretty good this is a chunk of manganin then I went ahead and made a better shunt for it still and that's what's in here now that one I ended up turning down some brass inserts for and then I silver soldered the shunt down into the brass and then soldered that into the circuit board so this meter I've actually ran this thing up to 20 amps for know, quite an extended test and didn't have any problems with it so I thought what we could do is take the shunt that I had previously made for the UT61E put that on the test jig and let's just see how much current this thing could actually hold alright so you can see the shunts in the lower left we're currently applying roughly 10.2 amps through the shunt looks like it's dropping roughly 140 millivolts right now again this meter is looking at the output of the power supply not actually the drop across the load so let's go ahead and get started See, we're just burned open right on one of the bends. So yeah, it did a pretty good job for being a 20 amp shunt, I'd say. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. Again, just wanted to demonstrate the new power supply. Till the next test. Later.
blew the breaker.